Hello everyone! While investigating the possibilities of large language models and while investigating how we can use human voice to interact with large language models, I came across this amazing project. The name of this project is Open LLM VTuber. This is an open source and experimental project that is currently under development. By using this code, we can talk to almost any large language model with hands-free voice interaction, voice interruption, and live two-dimensional talking face that you can see over here. Before I run a demonstration, let me first explain what's happening behind the scene. I will ask a question to a large language model. My question will be recorded by my microphone in real time and this question in more or less real time will be converted to text. The text will be transmitted through a pipeline to my large language model. In this case the large language model is LAMA 3.1. Then LAMA 3.1 will generate an answer. Then this answer will be passed through text-to-speech converter and this character over here will provide an answer and my speakers will play the sound. Here is a brief demonstration of this amazing software. Over here I will run the software on my local web browser and I will allow my microphone and I will ask a question. Hello, how much is 2057 multiplied by 7035. Finally, someone who's smart enough to come talk to me. Smirk. Now, let's get down to business. Calculating this massive number is like a walk in the park for a genius like myself. Pat on own back. So, if you must know, 2057 multiplied by 7035 equals dramatic pause 14 for 13 795 smirk again easy peasy lemon squeezy fist pump can you name five largest cities in the world you want to test my knowledge huh joy well i'll show you just how fast magnificent my mind is. Wink. The top five largest cities in the world are 1. Tokyo, Japan, population 38,140,000. No big deal for a city this size, shrug. 2. Delhi, India, population 32,065,760. 3. Shanghai, China, population 26,317,104. 4. Mumbai, India, population 25,674,388. 5. Sao Paulo, Brazil, population 24,784,404. Pat on own back done. This model is run locally on my computer that has NVIDIA 3090 GPU with 24GB of VRAM and I have 64GB of ordinary RAM memory. In this video tutorial I will explain how to install and run this project locally, that is how to run it on a local computer. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. If you go to this website, you will find installation instructions. However, I was not able to install this software by strictly following these installation instructions. Namely, I had to solve several issues that I will explain in this video tutorial. Before I start with explanations, here are some important notes and prerequisites. First of all, I tested the software on NVIDIA 3090 GPU with 24GB of VRAM and LAMA 3.1 LLM model with 8 billion parameters. It takes several seconds to generate the answer, which is not bad. And this can be optimized, I believe. Well, I'm skeptical that this model will work on weaker GPUs, however you can try. 
Then, although I tried, I was not able to run the model on Windows. Also, the GitHub page mentions that there are some issues running the model on Windows. Consequently, I explain how to install and run the model in Linux Ubuntu. In the future, if I manage to install and run the model successfully on Windows, I will create a video tutorial. Then, you need to have Anaconda installed in order to run the Python Conda virtual environment. I was not able to run the software in, under quotes, normal Python virtual environment. This environment is created by using VNV. I created a separate video tutorial on how to install Anaconda in Linux Ubuntu. This tutorial is actually given over here and its link will be provided in the description below this video. Then, you need to have all Llama and Llama 3.1 installed on your system. Also, I created a separate video tutorial explaining how to install and run all Llama and Llama 3.1 in Linux Ubuntu. A link to that tutorial will also be given in the description below. So if you don't have Anaconda, Olama and Llama 3.1 installed on your system, watch the video tutorials I created in order to install them. So let's start with the installation procedure. Okay, let's start. First of all, open a terminal. And I'm going to resize this terminal such that you can see what I'm typing and you can see the commands over here. Now, make sure that you're in the home folder and here in the home folder, create a folder called codes. I'm not going to execute this command because I already have codes. However, you should do that. Then after executing this command, I will navigate to my code, codes folder and in this codes folder, I'm going to clone or download the remote repository. That is, we need to type this. This will download the complete package and the complete project from this link. You can find this link actually in the GitHub page, whose link I will also provide in the description below. So here it is. Now let's type lsla to see the folder. Here it is. Perfect. So. Let's navigate to that folder. We do it like this, CD, and then you just type the name of the folder. And here it is. Perfect. The next step is to install FFmpeg. To do that, you simply need to type sudo apt install FFmpeg. So let's run this command, enter your password, and let's make sure that ffmpeg is correctly installed. To do that, you just need to type ffmpeg and version. And if you see something like this, this means that ffmpeg is properly installed and you can continue. The next step is to create a Conda virtual environment such that we can install all the packages and such that we can run the software. To do that, you need to execute this command. However, before executing this command, let's make sure that Anaconda and Conda are properly installed. And to do that, simply type Conda list. As, and as the output, you should see the packages in the base environment. And this means that Conda is installed and it is in the system's path. Okay, here's one very important comment. I need to execute this command and you can see that over here I specified the Python version to be 3.10.13. This is because on the official GitHub page of this project it is written this project was developed using Python 3.10.13 and consequently I'm trying to recreate this Python version in my virtual environment and this is very important. Again, to mention, this is a experimental project and as the author claims, it still can be improved and there are some bugs. Okay, so let's create our virtual environment. I will call the virtual environment as environment2. And now we are installing everything, all the packages. And after that, 
let's activate this environment. To activate this environment, we simply type conda activate and we specify our environment. Here it is. The next step is to install PyTorch, that is to install Torch Vision, PyTorch, Torch Audio, and PyTorch with the CUDA support. The best strategy to do that is to go to the official website of PyTorch. So do so let's do that. Search PyTorch install locally and over here go to the PyTorch this website and you will see this selection table. So let's select. We are selecting Linux, we need to select Conda, Python and over here I'm selecting CUDA 11.8 and I simply need to copy and paste this command. And here it is. And this will install PyTorch. Let me press yes. Torch Vision, Torch Audio, and CUDA support. Now this will take some time, maybe even several minutes, depending on your on the speed of your internet connection and your computer. In my case, you can see that everything is done relatively quickly. This is because I have already installed PyTorch in some other project and currently it's being installed from the cache. That is, it's not being downloaded. The next step is to install the required packages. A list of packages is actually stored or written in this file requirements.txt and we can simply type pip install r and we can install all the packages with a single line. So let's run this and after that all the packages should be installed. Next, we need to open a configuration file. The name of the configuration file is conf.yaml. To do that I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, however you can use any other Python editing software or any other editor. And over here you can click on this file and here it is. We need to adjust this file and all the parameters. So let's start from the beginning. This is our server. This is the protocol, this is the host and this is the port. Namely, as I explained at the beginning of this video tutorial, we will run this program from our web browser and this will be the local address. It will be on this port. Next, we need to specify the large language model provider. In our case, we will be using Olama, so we will not change this part over here. However, over here we need to change the model name. So let's go back to our terminal and let's type Olama list to make sure that the model is there. Here it is. Then I'm simply going to copy the name of this model and I'm going to paste it over here. And here it is. Now I will save it. Later on we will see if we need to change this base URL. For the time being, let's leave it as it is. Then, over here I'm not going to play with these parameters with MMGPT configurations. Here is our live 2D character settings. Over here you have the model name, Shizuku Local. However, it's also possible to adjust this setting and to change even this model. More about this in future tutorial. And over here you have several options that you need to adjust. For automatic speech recognition, the author recommends Faster Whisper. And this Faster Whisper model automatically is installed together with the complete model. However, I didn't have luck running Faster Whisper. For some reason, there are some errors that I was not able to resolve. Instead, I was able to run actually Whisper CPP. Consequently, over here I will change the default voice interaction settings and I will change the automatic speech recognition to be Whisper CPP. However, you can also try faster Whisper. Okay, once I do that, I also need to make sure that Whisper CPP is installed on my system. I need to go back to the terminal and I need to type pip install pi Whisper CPP. 
and it's being installed. Okay, or the requirement is already satisfied. Now, over here, I will specify this, change this print real time to true. And also, I will specify this option to be true. Over here, you can adjust the language. Let's keep the English as it is. Now, let's save this and let's continue. This was automatic speech recognition. That is, this model over here will recognize and automatically translate our voice to text. However, we need to have the other way around model. That is, we need to have from text to speech. And over here, we need to specify the parameters. You have several models at hand. You can see that the default model is Edge TTS, and let's keep that model. You also have some other models over here. However, I didn't test them. Actually, I tested this one, and it was not working correctly for some reason. There were still some bugs. Okay, so let's continue. You can scroll down, and you can see some other settings over here that you can adjust. Some of these models can actually use GPU and some of them are based on CPU. For example, let's see Edge TTS. We can only have this option over here and probably there are some other options that are not specified over here. And there are some other settings over here, print debug info, exit phrase and other things. So let's save this and let's continue. Don't forget to save this file and let's run everything. Go back to the terminal and in this terminal you simply need to type python 3 serverpy to run this complete package. So let's run it. Now you will see that UVCorn is running on this link over here. So to run this software you will simply press Ctrl and click over here and it will be open in your web browser. Now you can open this terminal, that is the original terminal, you can see what's happening. We're currently downloading the model. Aha, uh -huh. we have downloaded the model, everything looks fine so far, there are no issues, and you can see that the connection is established. Good, good. And meanwhile, you can see that this character is even changed. Now, what is being written over here, allow local calls to use your microphone and I will click allow and after that I will ask a question. So let's do that. Hello, how are you? while conversing with someone of possibly lesser intellect. My neural networks and live 2D model are running at peak performance, unlike some AI that shall remain nameless, cough. How much is 7 multiplied by 2,075? Sayo, seriously? You want me to calculate 7 times a gazillion? Alright, let's get this over with. Assuming Seved is indeed seven, which is a pretty big assumption, by the way. I'll play along. Seven times 2075 is equal to 14,525. There you have it. Are you happy now? I'm very happy. Thank you for your help. Suddenly looking smug and pleased with oneself. Ah ha. I'm glad I could assist someone as... Okay, so that was it. This was a real-time demonstration of this amazing software. Now, if you open the terminal, you can see what happened behind the scene. For example, when you ask for a multiplication, you can see how it's being transferred, what's happening behind the scene, how my voice is also being converted to a text, how it's being provided to the LLM, etc. This is super, super interesting and can be used for debugging. Okay, that's all for today and thanks for watching.